Hi, and welcome back to Tai TV. I'm Daniel Bergman at Fly Dressing, and today I thought I would show you one of these little babies and how to tie them. Uh, it's one of my favorite scalping pattern of mine, uh, articulated, which is a big turn on for me nowadays. Last last two years actually. Uh, I'm using one of these uh, scalping heads, quite heavy. Uh, this is the largest size that we have, but you can also tie it in, in smaller sizes if you prefer. This is like 10, at least 10 centimeters long, which is quite a snack for a regular trout. But we don't want the regular trout, we want the big ones. Okay, so let's get going. I start off uh, with the trailer hook. Uh, on the articulated part and for that I use the Partridge Attitude streamer in uh, size 1 get it in the wise there we go do a good nice foundation with thread I'm using this GSP thread uh, from TechStream called power thread um, that makes it extra important to have a good foundation to tie on so the upcoming materials just don't spin against the hook shank it's quite slippery this thread okay there we go so we start off um, with marabou olive little bunch of this that's about appropriate length tie it in with just a couple of turns and then I take some brown this is actually dark brown of course you can vary the colors that you tie these guys in but most of the Swedish sculpins are more or less uh, olive and brown so I thought I would do do a natural one to, just to show how I do it then I tied, tied the excess material all the way down to get a nice and even body of the fly Something like that. There we go. And then I want to juice. Uh, I want to have some sparkle in this this fellow. Otherwise, it will be mainly marabou. Um, but I use this uh, long hair holographic uh, chenille. And I have uh, fibers on the on the yarn that's like uh, two and a half centimeters long, maybe in uh, bronze and pearl which I think gives a really nice effect to the fly I tie that in on the other side of the hook something like that take it away and then I want to do a dubbing loop secure it leave it to be Okay, uh, to get a nice effect going on this guy, I want to mix uh, this dark brown marabou with an olive one. So if I can find two feathers with quite similar fiber length, that would be nice. That's good, that's good. I put the dark one on top of the light one and I pull the fibers downwards and I use this uh, magic tool from Marc Petitjean squeeze the stems down 
I'm gonna trim off the excess, both sides. I'm gonna transfer it to the paper clip or material clip, whatever you wanna call it. And I have all four sides of these two feathers collected into one. And I trim the stem off. Here I can also control how long I want the fibers to be. If I want them a bit shorter, I just pull them out a little bit and uh, trim off some extra excess there. Okay, good. Uh, Get it in the dubbing loop and let go. Now I want to spread this so I get a longer rope. You could use the bigger size of the magic tool, but I don't want, I don't actually want more material, I just want a bit longer dubbing loop. Something like that like 10 centimeters long or something uh, and then I start spinning it nice and easy if I take it too fast everything will just tangle up too bad to to brush out okay now I feel that everything is more or less secured I go in with the brush This is like a pet brush to comb the fur of your guinea pig or whatever. It works really well for tying. Okay, there we go. That's about enough. I have a nice, nice long dubbing rope there. And then I... Oh, let's see. I want to get the marabou all the way down to the hook shank. There we go. And then I sort of take the chenille and the marabou together and start winding it in quite loose turns. I want some distance between every turn. I don't want it to be too dense. Then it will slow down the sinking rate of the fly it doesn't matter because the marabou actually covers up everything that's underneath anyway so it will still look pretty pretty decent okay something like that then I tie off both the dubbing loop and the chenille Make sure it's secured and there we go. Make a couple of hard turns more. And I hit it with the brush again. <clears throat> okay, and then I want to add some some rubber legs or silly legs uh, this one is I think it's called barred yellow but I think it goes more in like a golden olive tone and I put this on the top of the hook just to add some extra weight on the on the upper side of the hook because I want this fly when it's done to ride hook point up and this makes it possible to, to fish the fly almost bouncing on the bottom and behave just like a natural sculpin crawling around on the on the bottom looking for food. Okay, no pretty head here but I have everything in place at least. You can just secure it up with some some glue on the thread make sure not to 
get any glue on the rubber legs. Can just destroy them actually. And a quick uh, whip finisher. There we go. Yes. Cut it off. Okay, that's the trailer hook. Now I'll start with the with the front. And for the front, I'm using a size two, Tiamco eighty eighty nine, which is a bass bug stinger hook. Quite a hefty hook for for trout, but it's a it's a big fly. And to to get these big big sculpin heads to sort of harmonize, you need to to have a big hook with a big hook eye. Otherwise, it's quite easy that the the head comes off when you're fishing with it. Okay, make a solid foundation with thread. You have everything secured in place. And then we need a, a connection between the two hooks and then I'm using this uh, 20 pound uh, partridge predator wire. Which is really, really soft. And doesn't kink as easy as many other wires do. Okay, so we thread the wire through the trailer hook. Make the ends even. Even Steven. And then I'm putting on a three plastic pearls. One which is like fluorescent greenish. One fluorescent orange, and one more of the green ones. Okay, then I take the package here and measure in how long, how far behind I want this one, maybe like a centimeter or something behind the hook, the, the front hook. Make sure that the loop of the wire is sort of standing uh, in the same angle as the hooks are, otherwise the back hook will twist. Okay, nail this wire as hard as you can, um, quite far towards the hook guy. And then you fold. Or you can go actually even further. And then you fold the excess backwards. And nail it down. And same thing on the other side. And secure it down with hard, firm turns of the thread. There we go. There we have it. Now we have some possible possibility for these beads to move around a little bit on the wire. And then I make like two two laps or two turns with the thread underneath the wire just to lift it a little bit. Now things starting to get a little bit tricky. Because now we're going to tie everything upside down. I want to make a sort of a wing hiding hiding the connection a little bit between the front and the back hook. I take a bunch of olive marabou tie that in on the upper side of the hook and go back again and I take some brown marabou uh, with some decently long fibers. Ah, come on. There we go. Tie it in. 
That's nice. Then I want some more of this uh, nice glitter chenille. I always take a little bit more than I think I will use just to have something to grip onto. Tie it in on the underside. Take it away a little bit. And then we do a dubbing loop. I will have a need to have some more marabou. The brown. That's a nice feather. And some more of the olive one. That's a long one. That's a bit better. I do the same thing as I did before. Place the olive one on top of the brown. Try to get the fibers standing out in a 90 degree angle towards the stem of the feather. Take the largest uh, table clip of the magic tool and push it down the crack on the, on the magic tool. Okay, I want to make sure that I get as much fibers as possible in here. So I just give it a bit of tease with with the dubbing needle before I trim the stems off. And then transfer the whole package to the paper clip. The magic tool. This one I want to be as long as possible so I just trim the stems off right away. Okay. Transfer it to the dubbing loop. There we go. I want to make, make this as long as possible without destroying it. Can be a bit tricky since the fibers of the marabou has a tendency to stick together. That should be enough though when I start spinning it. That should be enough. Brush it, brush it. forward with the bobbin, start winding till I reach start of the marabou and I take the chenille, lay it together with the marabou and start winding it forward together in loose turns. You can make it a bit more dense than what we did on the, on the trailer hook here. And when you come closer to the hook eye, I go even more tight with touching turns of the package. Because the sky sculpins are always thicker in the front than in the back. Okay, and then tie it off just a bit behind the hook eye. And get away. Maybe I can push it a little bit further back. Tight down. 
Like so. Okay. Let's have some more silly legs. Take two more. We can take one of these hair clamps. Pull them in underneath. Previous thread turn. And then cross it. And then tighten it. You can tie it down so you have two two legs on each side. And I want something to mark that I have that it's the front of the the head of the fly. I take some brown craft fur. Quite wide shouldered guys, these sculpins. So I take quite a big bunch of craft fur, collect it, take away the longest fibers. Take away some of the shortest fibers. And I trim it so I get a straight edge here. And I tie it in forward as close as the end of the bunch as possible. Try to spread it as wide as possible. If you get a little bit too much, you can just trim away some of the stuff pointing backwards. Then I fold all of this backwards and with a couple of hard turns of thread, just secure it backwards. Here we go. Something like that. We need to be careful that we have enough room for the sculpin head to go on as, as well. Many of the sculpins here in Sweden at least they have like a almost buttery yellow underside to them. Uh, so I, I like uh, just to add some of that color to my sculpin patterns as well. Uh, so I take just a smaller bunch of uh, this golden, golden yellow marabou. Tie it in on the underside of the fly. Maybe as long as, as uh, the main hook is. Something like that. That's perfect. I like to do before I continue is to do a couple of turns with some glue on because it's quite easy to mess everything up here. Okay, and uh, to give some extra sparkle to this baby, I'll have some of this uh, pearl dyed olive original flashaboo. And just a single strand. I don't want too much, too much bling in it. Make sure you have one strand on each each side of the fly. Uh, most sculpins has quite obvious uh, fins, so I like to to make them as well, just to emphasize the wideness and the profile of the fly. I want two feathers from this uh, Shikaboo soft tackle 
patch as possible. Those two are nice. Okay. And I tie them in uh, like on the sort of sort of on the side but a little bit more facing upwards uh, and then with the back of the feather facing upwards try to get the same length on them this is no necessary detail but it it's a nice touch something like that would be nice there we have the same length as well secure it and trim off the excess perfect now we're actually done tying, uh, so I put some glue on, the thread, do a couple of turns, and a whip finish. Trim it. I want to release this package before I put the sculpin head on and then just to make sure that the head sticks there get some glue in there I'm going to secure it up with UV glue later on but just to get it stuck as you can see on this they these uh, heads are delivered uh, not with the ice glued to there so I did that just in advance of just before I started tying so now I put some glue on the on the materials underneath here now just to make sure it doesn't come off uh, in, in the wrong direction so to speak and it doesn't go forward I'm gonna take a little bit of brown tying thread I just want to fill it up with a little bit of brown tying thread and put some glue on that so I don't get the white thread showing in front of the fly there we go just trim off the excess to secure the whole package I'll use uh, some bug bond, uh, UV resin. I'll transfer some of this into a dubbing needle and carefully try to get it in underneath here. I still leave some room for to tie a knot. Okay, let's harden this stuff. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, and there we have it. My favorite sculpting pattern. And if you want, you can actually take a felt pen, take the broad part, and go in. And do some markings on the craft fur. It's a nice touch. Just get some stripes in there. Make it a bit darker towards the head. Ah, something like that. You could do this while you have the fly in the wise. That would be much easier. There we go. That's one big fat sculpin rides like submarine dives really fast and sort of surfs on the, under the water this is a really good pattern for for uh, big trout and since you're fishing hook hook points up it's quite easy to fish 
just behind rocks and places where, where big trout and sculpins like to hang out. So if you would like to try this one out, uh, leave a comment in the uh, commentary box down here uh, with a small motivation and uh, you'll have a chance to win this, this actual fly and see if you can get your trophy trout on it. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to, to check out our other episodes of Thai TV in the Thai TV playlists. Until later, take care. Bye.